Hello, my name is Kiriath, and today we are just going to have a nice, chill painting session. It's Saturday, so let's sit down, paint some stuff, get into get into that nice zen zone that we that we get into for this sort of thing. And uh, this time around, I'm just going to ease in because there's some update stuff I need to do to my Dreadnought army. So uh, I painted my Chapter Master, Chapter Master Alagos. So he's he's mostly mostly 99% done. There's just some touching up and a few. A few things I need to just do wash-wise and just clean up-wise. Uh, but for the most part, he's done. All the colours blocked in, you know, the cables are done. And uh, all the all the green glowing stuff has been tidied up so that it's consistent. And I painted him a little bit differently. I did a bit of black, a bit of uh, a bit of gold. I did some, some kind of uh, copper colour on there as well. Which I also did for my Purge the Pit Force, which uh, there'll be a link to that army in the, uh, in the description so you can see what I did to them. And uh, I thought what I would do is redo the rest of the Dread Mob to match this. So the Dread Mob largely is uh, is gun metal and rust. I chose that scheme because it was quick, it was easy, and with the green it was distinctive, and it was only intended to be a small project. But then I kept buying Dreadnoughts, lots and lots of Dreadnoughts. And the scheme got a little bit old for me, like it was still fine and fun to paint, it wasn't difficult, it was just, okay, I've painted a Dreadnought because it took me 10 minutes and that's it. But I want them to be more coherent and a bit more, have a bit more variation, a bit more style overall. Uh, it was fine for like a short term, you know, I only plan to do sort of eight of these kind of idea, uh, especially since I was painting them quite quickly. Uh, but I wanted them to be a bit more involved um, and a bit closer to what the chapter master here has ended up like. There's his cape that he got when he was uh, when he was alive. He kept it because he liked it. I need to do the... Uh, the security seal is going to be black, not red, but I need to sort that out. One of the, one of the small details that I need to sort. But I thought I will, uh, I'll go through and I'll repaint the rest of the dreads. Not a full repaint, obviously, but you know, just bring them in line. So that is what I'm going to do a bit of today. So break out some paints, break out some models, and uh, just join me for a little bit of painting. I'm still trying to work out a way to stream this. Uh, my webcam is not good enough for it. I think the light sensor in it is going or something because it's really shockingly dark at times. I have to really mess with the footage in post to make it even remotely viewable. Um, so I'm not really sure how to do that at the moment, which is why this is just a, a standard video. Uh, I intend to stream this stuff in the future, but it's just not there. The standard's just not there in terms of video quality. The, uh, the uh, phone I'm using, well, just my phone, is fine. Uh, the autofocus can be a little bit finicky, but just the overall quality is infinitely better. So I'm using that to record. Just hope I don't get a call. So currently, this guy has got the uh, he's got a gold kneecap there, which I'm going to go over and I'm going to redo that wash that's there. What I'm thinking is I will paint this section black because uh, then he'll have a bit of black there. Now, you can just paint straight over this rust. Um, it's got typhus corrosion, and it's got uh, some weathering powder over the top, but you can kind of just paint straight over it if you really want to. Um, it leaves a little bit of a texture, but it's actually not too bad. Another solution you can do is to sand it down slightly, which um, I might do. I'm undecided. Uh, so what I'm doing is just blocking in black, so I don't need a particularly fine brush, so I'm... I'm using uh, an Artis Opus small four, so give it a little bit of a lick. You've got a licky brush. You don't have to lick your brush, that's not mandatory, but you can do it if you like. I also suggest for this, if you want to, uh, slap a bit of music on, you know, as you do. I've got some music on in the background. You're not going to hear what it is, because it'll get things instantly copyright claimed, as you'd expect. Um, but I do have something just, just chill out in the background. What do I have on? Oh, Forever Still. It's not chill at all. It's I don't know if I'd class it as metal, but it's sort of fairly heavy, shouty. Just the kind of thing that I like. So yeah, I'm just going to block in this slot here. Just get down the side. It doesn't really matter if it goes over the hinges because I'll probably repaint the hinges themselves. Doing a, I'm using contrast, using Black Templar contrast. It doesn't matter if I go over the gold there. Because you get a nice, uh, you actually get a nice uneven colour with the Black Templar contrast. Oh, I just whacked it all over the gun barrel. Oh, let's see if we can get rid of that. Don't want to do that. 
yeah, sorted. Also, when you screw up like that, you can just you can just get rid of it. You can just wipe it off. So yeah, we'll get around there. Nothing particularly taxing this time round. Next time, next week, I think what I'm going to do is paint some... Uh, I've got a hankering to do a greater demon of some kind, so I'm thinking I might get a changer of ways. Because I'd love to tackle the uh, the wings on the changer of ways. Get some nice blending going on. That's what I'm, I'm tempted for for next time. Just get that right down there so it's consistent. Need to get it all the way up there. Yeah, I like using uh, Black Templar for this because it's it's not consistent itself. It's I think we're going to do this bit as well. I can always go back over. In fact, I might make that a copper colour, just to break it up a little bit. Kind of almost tie it into the top, but not really. So do I want to get all the way down there? No, probably not. Need to do the underside. There we go. If you want to listen along then uh, the album is Breathing Colours by Forever Still, so you can find that on YouTube or Spotify. It's on Spotify, because uh, that's what I use to listen to stuff, but you might want something a bit more chilled than that. Depends on what kind of mood you're in, really. Okay, so let me uh, shift over a little bit. So I'm, I'm a bit hemmed in with wires. In fact, I'm just going to... I apologise if this shifts the camera slightly, but I'm just going to shift a wire out of the way. There we go. That's better. Because I've got my phone plugged in so it doesn't run out of battery. And it won't run out of storage because I took all of the God knows how many photos off it so that I could record this. I'm thinking that's a solid amount of like metal and rust on the uh, on the missile launcher on the side there. Gonna have to sort that out at some point. Uh, I'm thinking of going over here. Going over this shoulder pad. I'm pretty sure, yeah, the uh, the Redemptor I did for the Purge, the Pit Force, has got a black shoulder pad, and I quite like the way that broke up, like, the weapon side of things, so we'll do that. As you can see, I'm just going straight over the section that's already been uh, already been rusted. I'm not going to bother filing it down. If necessary, I can always do a little bit of rust effect over the black if it doesn't look quite right, but... I've done it before, and it's really not made a huge amount of difference to the finish. Because it's weathering powder that's causing quite a lot of the uh, the look of it, the weathering powder just sort of... I don't know whether it dissolves or what, but it just ceases to be under the, uh, under the colour. I think if you're using, like, um, what is it? Rise of Rust, it might not work quite as well painting straight over, but... I found that it works fine. A lot of the rust effect that I did uh, on the original Imperial Knights I had that I converted to Chaos. Although, mind you, going under those purity seals is going to be a pain in the ass. I can always repaint them if I need to, it's fine. Oh, oh, there we go. Just getting right up there. All over the gold, that's not a problem because we can wipe that off. Go on, up we go, up you go, yeah, there we go. Right, you can get off there. Ah, I'd love it. Perfect. That's fine. So yeah, it's just about trying to make the overall look of this army a bit, just a bit more complete, a bit more finished, a bit more, well, a bit more like some effort's been put into it, frankly. I'm happy with how it is, but it can be improved, and I like the changes that I've made to other units. So, it's a case of, I don't need to, but I want to, and so I am. And things like the exhaust on the back there, those are going to be copper instead of just being normal gun metal. So, it's little changes like that. Smack some of that on there as well. Got to be careful, because I don't have to redo the green, because that's actually a bit of a pain. It's simple enough, it's just waiting to... Get the timing right for stuff drying and things. Just takes a little longer. Okay. So yeah, as I said, I'm using contrast because you get an uneven finish on flat surfaces with it, which I quite like. It gives quite a nice effect, and given the uh, 
the overall look of this army having that kind of more uneven effect i think i think it works a bit better as you can see i'm, I'm not applying this in any sort of specific pattern um which again is just part of how i've decided to do the scheme for this army none of them are, it, there's no like uniform look to them which is how i like it um but yeah i'm gonna do this bit as well now i'll probably do a bit of gold on this guy too a bit of gold or a bit of copper? I think a bit of gold. The uh, gold on the chapter master looks looks cool, so I'll do a bit of gold. Now the gold paint that I use, uh, I'm going to use it wrong. Mostly because I've run out of white spirit, so I can't clean the brush properly, so I'm going to use a knackered old brush that is kind of crap. Um, just because uh, yeah, I'll have to go over there too, that's fine. Um, just because uh, it's it's alcohol-based paint and trying to do it, and it's got like proper little metallic stuff in it, like metallic flecks and things, to make a very smooth colour, um, which just means you can't clean them in water, it clumps up and goes all naff. So, see that already, I prefer to how it looked before. I think I, think I am going to actually go over that in lead belcher again so it dips in a bit more. I was going to do it copper, but I don't think I will. Unless I do the whole front of that sarcophagus copper, that's an option, isn't it? Yeah, I might do that, actually. Yeah, that could look fun. I'm tempted to do that black, but I'm not sure. I feel like between that, that, and that, there's a decent amount of black there. So I'll leave the black for now. What have I done with my... Uh... Oh, there we go. Just getting the uh, the old paper towel out. Give the brush a quick clean. This uh, this artist opus brush is one of a couple of extras that they sent me along with the three boxes. Uh, they sent me the small, the medium, and the dry brush. Um, and unfortunately, one of them has already fallen prey to being accidentally left in a paint pot overnight. Now that was on an evening that I wasn't painting anything, so that wasn't my fault. But it doesn't matter how good your brushes are. If you do that, you're going to mangle the end something horrible. Like part of the uh, part of the very edge of the brush, I think I can show you. It was like, yeah, can you see that? Look at it; it's totally lost its shape, and it's lost its shape because it was resting in a weird way. So it was like twisted, and some of the bristles were like pushed out. I was not massively happy, but you know, whatever. Mistakes are made. It's only stuff. So it's only stuff. I was still quite annoyed, but still, right. So, for the gold, now I'm using Vallejo Liquid, so I really love these paints. So there's gold, silver, copper. Now I want gold on that whole section there. So, oh, oh god, I actually got it open first go. You need to give these a pretty good, sh no, need to give these a pretty good shake, because uh, the pigment separates quite badly sometimes. Getting a bit ASMR in here, shaking that down the <laughs> microphone. There we go, that's a bit better. Right, so, where is my knackered? There it is. So I've got a very old, cheap brush, as you can see, I've used for before, uh, used for this before, and uh, I'm using this primarily because this is beyond saving now, this brush. Uh, it's had many an abusive, abusive painting session, and so it's, it's sort of lost all hope. So, oh, excuse you, Mike. So uh, I'm just going to go straight over with this gold. Now, there's quite a lot, but I don't intend to dip the brush back in at any point. It's just going straight on. The typhus corrosion has taken a bit of the detail out of that panel there, but that's not a problem. Once it's uh, once the gold's dried, we can give it a quick a quick wash, and it'll bring some of that detail back out. Okay, probably need a second coat actually due to the surface there, but that's fine. It dries real quick, which is one of the things I like about it so much. You can you can dry, you can like do a first coat and it will dry and you can do a second coat almost instantly, which is really helpful. And the fact is it just leaves a nice finish. It leaves a really nice, it's just a really nice colour. Okay, just get that corner. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so let me just tap test. Yeah. 
So just going to go across there. And any strokes that you leave actually tend to get covered up really well with a wash. So there's still a bit of that texture on that on that panel there, but it's nothing too bad. It's nothing too uh, too excessive. Let's go down this side as much as I can. I want to be careful. And the back just there. Sorry, I'm trying to remember to keep it on camera. Okay, so yeah, with that extra black and that extra gold, you know what? I'm just going to redo this knee as well. The way the wash settled there, I'm not happy with. So, there we go. Okay, yeah, see, that's already closer to the chapter master, and I'm already liking it a bit more. So uh, what I'll do is I'll just put the lid back on just so we can see what kind of difference that actually makes. So all we've done is we've blacked out that piece there. We've blacked out the center. We've blacked out the uh, the shoulder pad and the chapter master. Sorry, getting a bit up close and personal there. I had to reach down for him. That's the color scheme on the chapter master. So it's already closer. It's already quite a bit closer. There's a bit more copper going on in the Chapter Master, but actually not a huge amount. Some of the trim is copper, but beyond that, not a huge amount. So that's, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's lifted it a little bit is the thing. That's all I'm really, really aiming for. I'm just aiming to lift it a bit. Make it a bit less, a bit less samey. Make them a bit more visually distinct outside of just being. Oh, look at all the rust! Just give them a bit more of their own personality each. I think with the yeah, the black on the back's fine. I may change one of the uh, one of the legs to copper, but we'll see. We'll see how we go. Can't do a huge amount until that's dried there. So what I think I'll do is. Um, you can go up there, Chapter Master, because I'm going to need you back for reference in a second. Oh, God, don't fall. Uh, and we'll we'll move on to... Now, here's what happens with this. So, unlike normal paint, you dip this in here. Keep knocking the mic, sorry. Let me move it up a little bit. Right, so you dip it in here. And you can see straight away that the uh, the shape of the brush is totally wrecked. It's because it reacts with the water in a totally different way. So now that is almost solid. Can you see where the uh, like where the paint is collected and the bristles outside the edge? It doesn't really wash it either. It creates this weird sort of flexible, bendable material. Now luckily, the very edge of the brush remains fine, so you can still use it for painting. But once you've done that to one of these brushes, unless you're using spirit to clean it, which I normally would, but I don't have any currently... Um, that just that's it for those you need to clean them in in uh, in spirit not water when you're using those paints it's the only downside to them because uh, the upside is that they produce a really nice color like it's a really nice shiny color and yeah there is still a bit of that finish on there but to be honest you could probably get rid of that with another couple of coats to be fair which i might end up doing we'll see all right so he is a bit closer to to the chapter master's ideal. Now, I originally did start doing something like that with this guy. Uh, I went way too heavy on the dry brush with this guy as well. I don't know what the hell I did to this. But that, I'll go over the gold again because that's a bit messy. I'll probably paint the... I think I'll do that black and I might do this copper. Yeah, I think I'll do that. Okay, so we'll go over... I'll do this missile launcher black too, actually. I realise this is coming across as very arbitrary. Like, oh, what, what, which bit are you going to do? Well, whichever bit I fancy. I want each one of them to be unique and different and not have... No two of them are going to have the same exact combination, which I know will drive a few people absolutely <laughs> mental, but... It's just... I don't know, it just feels right for this army. To me, it's fine. It's absolutely fine if it doesn't feel right to you. It's okay. World, it'd be really boring if we all like the same stuff, wouldn't it? Whoever came up with it first, no one else would bother doing it different. Everyone having slightly different tastes and preferences makes things way more interesting. 
as long as you're not a, <laughs> as long as you're not militant about it, you know. No one likes that person who's like, no, no, I don't like this, so no one else is allowed to. No, people can like what they like as long as it's not hurting anyone. Especially when it comes to stuff like this. I know there's quite a few people who just flat out hate the paint job on these guys, and that's fine. You don't have to like it. In a in like a in a in a respectful way, it's not your army, so it's kind of you don't have to look at them if you don't want to. And you not having to play them, you're not having to play against them, you're not having to use them. It's it's a personal thing. All of this stuff is. It's one of the things that can make some of the kind of more I don't know. Wanting things to be fair is like, that's fair enough. Wanting everything to look the same is not my cup of tea. But that's the thing as well, you can choose who you play against. If you don't like a force like this, then you don't have to play against it. There's just so much space. So much space in 40k for literally everybody. Okay, now I'm not going to do the metal on the inside of that. Because... That's not going to work properly. Instead, I'm just going to carefully go around the edge. And there we go. And there, and there. There we go. Okay, so that's done. Uh, where? Oh, no, hang on. No, it isn't what we're talking about. Got this underside here. As you can see, this is on a funky 3D printed base, I believe, that was given to me by Fluff and Fury, which is awesome. I love it. It's got the logo on it. It looks cool. Okay, now do I do... I'm tempted to do that black, actually. How rough is that section? It's not bad. It's not bad at all. That'll take a lot of the... Uh, I'll take a fair amount of the rust out of the equation doing this one anyway. There is a lot in the centre, so having it broken up on either side, actually, I don't think is a bad thing. There we go. Just go right along the side there. Oh, smooth. Okay, I'm not quite along the edge on some of that. There we go. I can't remember whether this was a uh, this. Oh no, this wasn't a uh, an easy build. I'm trying to remember which ones are easy build and which ones are not. It, it's becoming increasingly difficult because some of them are so completely not the way that they're supposed to be built. This one is spe it's like especially egregious for that. There's no, <laughs> there is no weapon option for this. I mean, look at it. It's got a Skaven warp lightning cannon on the top. It's not a piece of standard kit. It's not the standard loadout at all. Okay, let's get down there and get that section there and we just need to get a little bit at the back which is going to be tricky but I reckon if we feed in that way nice there we go get that down the side I'm not going to do that power pack black because uh, I've already got one that looks like that so I'm not doing it okay I think something else needs to be black there and I'm thinking the fist. I think the fist needs to be black. The one that's holding the massive uh, Avenger Gatling cannon, is, I think has got a. I think you might have got a, a copper, a copper fist. So this one can have a black fist. I'm hoping I can get a unique combination of black, gold, copper, and silver on all of them, but we'll have to see. There might be some overlap. Because if I totally mangle this, it's okay, because the rest of it is just... Oh, I can just paint the knuckles a different colour. <laughs> oh, it's so nice just being able to cheat. Oh, oh, that was close. Okay, let's get the underside here. Trying very hard not to just breathe down the mic. I apologise if I am. It's also surprisingly difficult to keep talking whilst I do this because I'm used to just sitting in silence, just total silence. Okay, and I'm not doing that half of the fist, so... 
There's the black there. Yeah, I'll do that. I might do the knuckles copper, and I think I'll do that copper too. Oh, I forgot the arm moves on that one. Yeah, that can stay. And I think I'll do some copper on there. Oh, do I want to put a black, bit of black down there? Yeah, I'll do the opposite uh, that I did last time. Okay, get a nice uneven coat on it. Oh, it's weird painting that because it's uh, it's glued onto the wrong part of the leg. Because the legs are backwards, the bottom of the legs are backwards on this one. Because it changes the stance quite a lot, actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell. I think you probably can. But yeah, the legs are on backwards. Which is an idea that I nicked off uh, Norn Queen Alexis, actually. She did a really cool, like, resupply Dreadnought. Uh, like, covered in bags and ammo and stuff, and I thought it was awesome. And I really liked the detail of the legs being back to front, because it made it look like it was sprinting. So I nicked it. Something that I wouldn't have thought of doing if she hadn't have done it, so... Thank you, Alexis. That was, that was really good. I was like, oh, nice! I should do that. Someone did ask on uh, um, the community page when I put a picture up with the full army whether this is the same scheme as Dr. Dave uh, from Twitter, his Dreadnought army. And uh, I, keep forget I forgot to answer at the time, but no, it's not. Um, it's it unintentionally similar. I didn't actually know of his Dreadnought army until I'd already started painting mine. So it's one of those things where I painted it, it ended up looking kind of similar in a way, in that there's rust involved, that's really it. I mean, here's a black with uh, rust in very specific places, like on weapons and things. Um, his uh, his scheme is actually a lot closer. This is directly copied from him in using the rust for weapons and certain aspects and using the green for other stuff. Um, for my Dreadnoughts, it's not quite the same setup. And the addition of the gold, the copper, and the uh, black and stuff in different sections will hopefully... Uh, emphasize how different they are but yeah that was it was one of those things where i was like yeah i'll do this scheme that's cool and then started doing it and then someone was like oh hey there's someone else doing a quality dreadnought army look at this and i was like shit <laughs> i apologize for nicking your idea it was not intentional at all but there you go there are no original ideas it turns out i'm pretty sure he said that he nicked it off someone else <laughs> Because I said, hey, do you mind if I copy your scheme for my uh, my Dark Mechanicus kill team? And he said, yeah, sure, it's not my... St I think I'm 90% sure he's like, yeah, sure, I, I saw someone else do it and I did it, so... I might be misremembering, but I'm pretty sure that's roughly what was said. Things, you can, you can see someone else's scheme and go, oh, I would like to do something like that and then change it very rare that you'll ever see like a direct copy okay I need to be careful not to go into that dip there because I want it to be just on the outside uh, get a tiny bit more it's weird in that you don't want too much on the brush but at the same time the more you get on the 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 cleaner it is when it when it dries, it's a difficult line to walk. I'm just gonna go over that. Oh, that's actually brought out some of the detail there anyway, never mind. Uh let's go. Let's see if we can just edge around there. I'm not gonna go all the way along. I just want it to stop at just the right point. Which could be tricky. So I want it to stop in line with where the main body starts. So where that little bit that sticks out is. I think that's... I think that's done it. Just need to get down there. There we go. So just kind of follow that line. And then go underneath. Which is very, very awkward. There we go. I think that's got all of it. Uh, oh, I've got it right there. That's a pain. 
Uh, we'll go back and fix that later. That just needs a bit of lead belt just to cover that section up. That'd be fine. Okay, so no, I won't do those knuckles that colour. I'll do those silver probably. Right, so that's got the copper on there. Oh, I've missed a section. Hang on, hang on. Let's get that. Let's get that in there. There we go. Okay. Right. So that's added. Just It's just that little extra bit of like personality to it to make it stand out a bit more. Okay. And I might redo the gold on that one at some point too. But I'll see. I keep wondering whether this gun needs something actually. It's got the gold at the tip and it's got the gold at the side. Do I want to make anything else gold? I don't think so. I don't think so. Between the shoulder pad. Well, the shoulder pad is actually a bit dull for some reason. Not the shoulder pad. Like the uh, the armour on the side is a little bit dull. And I'm not sure why. Because I don't think I washed it. Yeah, we'll have to go over that again. Good thing is that the, the metallic paints dry really smooth. And they dry really quick as well. Okay, you never get used to how mangled this gets when it's water. Okay, there we go, there we go. It's so, so mangled, but it's fine. It, it, it survives, it prevails. Okay. Yeah, I'll probably get a bit of silver on the very edge of that at some point. I'm just sort of doing bits here and there just to bring them back in, like bring them in line with the chapter master. I would admit a lot of people were, a lot of you guys were a lot more, uh, I don't know, quite a few of you seem to think that the uh, the chapter master had, was more distinctive, kind of similar but distinctive, which I, I agree with. Okay, I only did the front panel on this actually, so I'll just stick with that. Okay, I've caught the very edge of the frag launcher, but it doesn't matter too much because that can be fixed. Okay, right at the edge. Right, get that just down there. Oop. Yeah, see how quickly that dries? That's now dry. It's done. No getting rid of that now. Just to paint over it. Kind of mixed, mixed blessings this paint. Lovely clean bright colour but dries so quick if you're not really on the ball. Also quite often you can't really wipe it off with just your finger anyway. You've got to, uh, you've got to get a bit of spirit soaked um, cloth of some kind or it's just not coming off. Okay so I'm going to leave that guy how he is for now. This little chap, now I went way overboard with the rust on this dude, so we're going to have to do some work to get him looking a bit a bit more fashion flancy. Uh, I think that will do black. I think that guard will do gold. Might do that silver, that big claw on top, which I forget why I put that on there. I think because I had it lying around and it looked funky, so that was why I did it. Pretty sure that was the entire reasoning behind that. That's normally how these things work. That's how the entire dread mob was made, in fairness. I have this thing. What can I use this thing? Oh, I know. I'll stick it on a dreadnought. So that's some interesting conversions, though, in fairness. Oh, I already like that more. I already like that more. The mortis dreads were badly base-coated. What the hell was I doing there? I'm going to have to stick a brush down there with some uh, lead belcher at some point. Oh, this was the horrendous one. I washed this model so many flipping times. Just would not. It, I just, I don't know what it was. Very, it's a uh, out of production now, but it's a uh, ironclad from Forge World, and it was not having it. It did not want to be clean. I'm going to do this little bit of gold. Uh, yeah, no, that's fine. I'm going to do this little bit of gold. And I think I might do here gold too, and then make the rest of that silver keep knocking there uh, microphone sorry I've got limited space here basically shunted everything on my desk to the side to make room for a uh, kind of 
quick and easy paint station. Yeah, okay, so that can then be either gold, either... Ah, oh, now do I do silver or do I do black for there? I could do black for there and then do silver for the shoulder. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll do black for the... Uh, do black for that section of armour and then I'll do... Uh, <laughs> look at the state of that now. Look at it. Look at it. It's so mangled. Um, and I'll do silver for the little shin pad. Why not? Why not? Once I got the silver out, I should touch something else up with a bit of silver. The question is what? That's the question. I really do like these paints. Oh, this album's quite good as well. If you like that sort of thing. You might not. As I say, if you've been listening to the same thing I've been listening to. Which you might not have done, because I didn't give you what it was until... I don't know how long in, but... <laughs> no one ever said this was going to be organised. Okay, got a little bit of silver. I think I've got way more than I need. Yep. Just get rid of some of that. And just get down there. It's, it makes it very hard to paint, to be honest, using a knackered brush like this. I'm just going to get right in there. The uh, I'll be honest, the quality on the cast for this was not great. I think it was an old sculpt, even when I, even when I bought one. God knows when I bought it though. I literally found it in a forgotten bits box. An entire Forge World Dreadnought just sat there. I was like, what the hell? It... How did I not know I had this? Oh, that was close. I'm just going to do the whole thing. I'm just going to do the whole thing. I think it'll look. I think it'll work better that way. Now, of course, I will give these a wash, but for now, I'm just getting the colours down where I want them. And they can get the, the dirty treatment after. Probably won't even get that much of dirt in treatment to be honest. I like the colour too much. There we go. Yeah, that I'd, that'll be dulled down with some known. That'll uh, bring it in line a little bit more. I think I'm just going to do all of that black. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that, and then we can get some copper on the exhausts with the old broken brush there. Okay, get rid of that, let's do the black, let's do the black, I like, I'm just enjoying using contrast, I don't have a huge range of contrast paints, but, well there is a huge range, I just don't have a lot of them, I only have a few, but the ones I use, I use religiously, like the black templar is just so good. I uh, I did a shed load, an absolute shed load of scenery with black templar. Because uh, I needed it in the emergency and I forgot that I hadn't painted it. It's like, oh, I've got a D and D session that is going to rely on. Oh, what's happened to this brush? Come on, what are you doing? Just, just get rid of it. There we go. Yeah, I squished it against something. That's what I did, dummy. so easy to mangle your brushes if you're not paying attention. I'm trying so hard not to knock the camera and the uh, and the microphone that I'm like I keep forgetting what I've done with important things like where the paint is and where the pot is and I'm just like oh don't know. Oh. Tell you what, let me just get another brush. Let's have you. Let's have you and we'll just get rid of that down there. Just scrape it away. It's got a bit mucky, but we can fix that later, so it's fine. It's another ca casualty brush, that one. I can't remember what happened to that one. I'll be honest, I'm not using my, breast, my best brushes today, because they're packed away for... What might hopefully be a bit of a painting session tomorrow. Packed like a bunch of my stuff away and I was like, oh, I was going to do some, going to record a painting video. And then I thought, well, I can still do that. Got some, got some other brushes that aren't quite as fancy, but they'll do. 
There we go. Okay. So just right on the edge there, need a little bit more. There we go. Okay, so he's got the black on there too. That feels like too much gold now. That feels like too much. I think I might do that little that little crevice down here. Some of it will dry a bit shinier because I've got the gold underneath. That's that's better. And that's better as well. Okay. Okay, there we go. So he's got his black there. Kind of tempted to make the rest of that armor black, but that is very thick on there. That's very heavy, so might just have to leave that. Didn't do his eyes. Absolutely jumped the gun on this guy, didn't I? I've got a thing for putting rust on that side as well. Dad deliberately did uh, a lot of rust there because it just about hides the fact that the cast was crap and none of the pipes reached the back of the dreadnought. Just about, not fully. But what can you do? It's out of production. I wasn't gonna I couldn't go, oh I found this in a box after having bought it several years ago. Can I have a replacement? I don't think that's how that works, unfortunately. Okay. You know what? Let's get the chapter master in here and let's have a little side by side and see how these guys are doing comparatively. Get rid of a bunch of that. I'll have to give this brush a proper a proper wash with the soap that they give you. You get a little soap container with the uh oh just open stuff, excuse me. To to properly to properly wash the brushes. Okay, uh you can get over there. You can go over there, you can go there. Right, where have you gone? There we go, I'll put you there. Nice. So there's the chapter master. Now bear in mind, all the metallics on him are washed. Um, so a lot of it is a lot dirtier than you're obviously seeing on these. But he's got the black, he's got the gold. The rust is nowhere near as prevalent on him, um, because I didn't want it to be. Uh, he's got rust in some places, like the big heat sink up the top I made rusty. Um, part of the flamers, but I, I uh, got rid of it out the front on someone's suggestion. I forget who suggested that, but thank you. And then there's some stuff on the back there. Hang on, let me actually do that properly. So yeah, we've got the... I could just put that on as like a fun heat sink thing. Um, we've got the same th effect on the back. And uh, yeah, we've got some on the on the flamers, but I obviously have damped that down using Nuln oil, so it's a bit cleaner on the very front. So comparatively, we obviously need to wash the stuff that we've just done. But that's brought that closer in line. There is a lot of rust on this one, which is deceptive. I might file some of that off, actually. Before next time, before I do any more work on that guy, I might file some of that off so it's a little bit more a little bit more reasonable. Went a bit overboard with that one. Liked it at the time, but not so sure now. Okay, this guy... No, I think that one's actually the closest. So let's, let's uh, have a look at this. Uh, 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 uh. trying not to get my handle over the contrast because it's not fully dried yet and it will rub off if you're not careful yeah that's I think that's made quite a big difference I think that has brought it a bit closer I think that has brought it quite a bit closer to him the green on this uh, chapter master is slightly different which again was an intentional thing um, but yeah the addition of the black and the gold and sticking that copper on has actually made quite a difference once it's washed once it's been weathered to the same degree like a good heavy coat of null and a bit of uh, sepia that'll be pretty close i think really the biggest is uh is this one this one that's made the most difference i just stuck my thumb all over the contrast oh look at it it seems to have oh no we're, we're good we're good <laughs> jesus all right yeah that yeah okay that matches way better that matches way better that's I think that shows that the change to the uh, change to the scheme overall, just those little additions, is making quite a big difference to it. Yeah, that's just adding more. That's just adding more personality than anything else. It's still it's still a similar scheme. It's still what the rest of the dread mob is, but it's also. I'm just going to go ahead and say it looks more finished. 
It's obviously a bit random. It's not like deliberately placed in the same places or anything like that, but it's, uh, yeah, that makes quite a big difference. So the actual technique for painting these hasn't changed really. It's just adding a bit more color and a bit more variation, which uh, I think is making making a bit of a difference. I'll tell you what, let me go and grab uh, one of the unaltered ones because then that'll hopefully give us a good point of comparison. Okay, so here we go. That is an unaltered one. Which is, I mean, all that is is just lead belcher. Not lead belcher. Yeah, lead belcher. Yeah, uh, spray lead belcher with rust, a bit of metallic here and there, and the green glow effect. That's the entire thing. Uh, that's all I did for that. Just highlighted the occasional bit and just threw rust and null at it until I was happy, which at the time was fine. And, you know... I'm not massively dissatisfied, but I know it could be better. Uh, that had obviously a lot more care and attention, but that next to that next to that, I mean, there's a pretty big difference there. That has got, I mean, it's got more presence because of what it's got on it, but color wise, it's got more presence and it's got more personality. The big thing for me is definitely this one though, because, uh, Yeah, that that looks that looks a lot better. That looks a lot better. Okay. Well, I was pretty sure I wanted to make some changes, and having made some changes, I'm now sure that I want to keep going with it. Oh, that's just I didn't realise that was a <laughs> I thought that was a helmet all this time. Need to paint that skull as a skull. Dear me. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely the way forward. That would have been fine if the project was what I thought it was going to be, which was very quick, very easy, just like a stupid a stupid concept army almost. Just what if rust was actually a colour, and that's about it. But in math, like on mass, it needs more variation, it needs more variety, it needs it just needs more personality. And uh, yeah, that I think that is a a nice middle ground as to between the two. So yeah. You can kind of see already where the uh, Black Templar is drying. It's not completely solid. There's a bit of variety here and there, which is why I like it so much. Okay, so that's a good like a good fifty minutes or so. Well, just under. That is the first. I don't even know what to call this. Let's paint. It's not a great name, is it? We'll work out a name for it. I hope you've. Painted some stuff yourself. I hope you've had a nice chill time just doing a bit of painting, just relaxing on the Saturday. And uh, yeah, I will see you for whatever video shows up next. Thank you very much for joining me for that. Feel free to click all the things. There's your affiliate link. You know how it works. And uh, yeah, I will see you for the next one.